The most important thing when it comes to gaining SR in Resurgence Ranked is end games. Getting late game kills and finding a way to clutch the win is how you will quickly gain SR and climb through the ranks. So today, we're going to be breaking down three different end games. Now, throughout each game, at key moments, I'm going to prompt you with a choice to see if you can make the right decision. The question is, how many can you get right? I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I hope you learned something. So this first game right here was a complete blender game, but honestly, it's probably one of the best examples I can give you of how important important these end games really are. Respawn is disabled. I don't know what my deployment fee was, but I'm currently sitting at zero SR. I have one single kill, but I finished this game gaining 143 SR. Now, before we break it down, two things that you have to understand because they are going to apply to every single end game situation that you're in. Number one, end game begins when respawn disables this is when we start to slow it down and play more strategic up until this point we've had the resurgence timer but now if either you or one of your teammates dies it's significantly harder to get you back so got to slow it down and play really strategic number two this is simple but crucial to understand the sr scoring system specifically placement points and here's how this works first of all just to go over it kills slash assists this changes at top eight and top three. So at top three, you get more SR for a kill or an assist, but more importantly, placement. And this applies to like really when you're last alive. This is top eight, top five, top three, and then winner. So if you're last alive, just play passive, collect your placement points, try to do what you can, but ultimately you are playing for your teammates to get SR as well. So just be really strategic and try to get to that top three mark without really having to do much with just sitting in a corner. Now, let's go ahead and jump in here. I'm flying back in. I just died. Notice that we do have a pretty long rotation. First thing we always look at is our rotation. As soon as we get that next circle, guys, as soon as it happens, we're going to be thinking about, okay, where exactly do we want to be? And we're going to talk a little bit about that here in a second with your first decision. I'm going to go back and grab that PA, which is really going to help. Also something we're going to be addressing in this first clip, how do we use kill streaks during these end games? It's not just kind of throwing them wherever we want to. Now, when we talk about positioning, the most important thing, if you are subscribed, you already know this, is in circle with cover. So you're going to see TCAP kind of ping this building straight ahead. Now, the other spot that we can go, if we look on the minimap here, is we could take technically play this rock, right? We could technically kind of sneak in this way right here, you know, play these rocks, but we're pretty out in the open and we're not in a great spot and we're also low ground. So we are going to go ahead and play this building right here and put ourselves in a good position. Which, by the way, I think on my last video, 55% of the people that watched it were subscribed, which also means that 45% of the people that watched it were not. So if you are looking to get better, make sure you are subscribed down below. Now, here's your first decision right here. Now we're in circle, right? Now, what do we do from here? You know, we're in a great spot here with this building. We've got a lot of cover here. We also can technically, we have this building right here. We also can push up. So are we going to A, stay here? Or, or do we want to B, push up top here? So we're going to push up top here. So, you know, again, I always say be in circle with cover, then power position. So both of these options are in circle, right? This is in circle right here. This is in circle right here. But this is the better option because it has more cover and it has a little bit more high ground. So we're going to try to get up there. We're not going to say that we have to get it, but if we can get it, we're going to kind of take advantage of it and also be able to, if we look on the mini map, shoot across this way towards teams that are rotating in. Now, notice on the mini map here that we do have a ping so we're going to be smart about pushing i kind of think about paing but i'm going to hold it for a second here notice tcap's already on the rooftop and one thing to keep in mind when we talk about in circle with cover then power position guys it's really important to understand that this rooftop is slightly above even though it doesn't look like it from this angle is slightly above this rooftop so technically this guy right here does have a little bit of high ground does have a little bit of high ground there but that's not to worry about we're going to go in and push forward Still 17, still zero SR. Let's go ahead and push in. I did not call that precision in, by the way. It did not let me. That's important. We're going to go ahead and push up. Tag that guy. And now we're going to go ahead and use the kill streak. Now, when we talk about end game, let's talk about how to use kill streaks. Kill streaks we use two ways. Number one is going to be uh, to get a full kill, right? That's a pretty simple one. You get it down, can't quite get the angle for the thirst. Let's go ahead and take the full kill. Number two is force people to rotate, okay? Specifically out of high ground, 
and out of cover. So in this case, what's going to end up happening here is TCAP, and I'm just going to go ahead and let this thing play and kind of keep the notes on screen here. What you're going to see here is that TCAP and HOG are both able to kind of push to this rooftop and get to a better position because that team has to rotate because of the because of the precision airstrike. Same thing with the mortar. So maybe you have somebody that's hiding behind a car or something like that. You PA it, they have to move. Now they have to rotate out in the open and you could potentially get that kill. So what we're gonna see here is notice they're moving up. I obviously have to be aware of my kill streak, but notice this gives us the window to push up. Now Hog gets over aggressive. Hog gets over aggressive and dies right here. Notice we don't have any flares and there's no buyback. So now all of a sudden we're stuck just with TCAP and I. Watch what TCAP does here. Remember what I said, in circle with cover, then power position. We're going to go back to that throughout each and every single one of these clips. TCAP's going to fly across. And remember this building right here? Remember this one right here that I said is a little bit higher? See how that's a little bit higher now? So, you know, they, they do technically, they would have an angle if they are still there, but they're not. Okay, let's go ahead and jump back in. We're just going to see where this next circle goes. Once we get that next circle, we got to start thinking about our next decision. But we also know we have a lot of people that are floating around us here. Okay, so who caught that guy? I want to talk about this situation. What am I nervous about here? Okay, this isn't a decision that I'm prompting you with. I just want you to think about this for a second. Okay, so this guy's rotating right. So he's got the early rotation. Uh, he's got the early rotation to it. If we look on the minimap, he's about right here. So what I am concerned about here is technically him moving this way and him shooting me this way because if he gets to this spot right here he's going to hold us out of circle right so he's going to be able to basically put himself in a spot where he's just going to wait for us the other thing is i am exposed to my back so i am worried about him getting to like this spot right here and then of course shooting me this way which puts me in a pretty tough position so we're just going to kind of keep an eye on that guy we're going to trust our high alert here i have high alert so i'm going to trust it one guy down below he pushes back into gas so we've got to be really aware of that enemy rotating to the left and notice tcap is going to go ahead and rotate early here still worried about teams to these left sides to my left side here still worried about that enemy right so remembering information is crucial to these end game situations i hear a guy down below but he's actually all the way down in that little crack right there and notice we do have a precision airstrike coming in now at this point right here we're in a pretty good spot again going back to what i always say in circle with cover then high ground and look at this zone right here actually we'll circle back to the zone here in a second i will circle back because i want to specifically focus on something that i happen to ping where you can really get a good sense of how good of a position that we're in Right here, by the way, notice yeah, yeah, at this yeah, moment yeah. already, guys, just because of SR and how the scoring works, we're up to 39. So we're zooming at this point. Okay, so right here, we're going to yeah, see this team backside. Back now, I want you to look at this on the minimap. You see this right here? See how I pinged that gun by accident? Look at the gun on the minimap. So when we talk about in circle with cover, then power position, we're in circle. We have plenty of cover because we have high ground. And what we're able to do is hold all of these people out that have to get in a zone, right? All of these people that are rotating in, we have the ability to hold them because we can easily shoot down on them. This is the position that we need to get ourselves in that allows us to maximize these kills. We're just going to go ahead and play it up. Now, next decision, is coming right here this is a tough one this is a panic situation that a lot of you guys find yourselves in this is a lot of a big one where you panic and you start to get nervous and you're not 100 percent sure what to do okay so we just got pa'd on the minimap and we got mortar so the question is do we go ahead and do we jump down low this way or do we push right to the bridge here be a second to the side we're going to push right here. We're going to keep our high ground. And what you're going to end up seeing is we know we can't drop down. There's too many teams down there, and I don't want to give up my high ground. So as I rotate over here, even in this situation, if I get hit by the PA, which was very close to me, they are not in a spot where they can revive, or sorry, where they can get the thirst, unless they have another kill streak. If they have another kill streak, then, you know, obviously I'm in a tough spot. But because we have so much high ground here, if I end up going down, TCAP can revive me, okay? So that's why we stay high ground as much as possible. Don't be afraid to eat those mortars and, and precision airstrikes if you absolutely have to. Now we're in a good spot here. We've got circle. Another actually very important thing to understand after we get that, we're going to pick up a ton of SR right here, by the way. 
we're just picking up a ton. Um, important to understand right here, six circle is the last circle. So now instead of this pulling, you know, this way or something like that, this is actually, instead of this like pulling again, this is just going to start to close on itself. Okay. So important to understand that this is when this gets really tough and we want to be in a good position and, you know, before this happens to potentially hold people out three teams, by the way, there's 83 SR now because we're top top three, right? So we just got that extra 20 for placement points. Also, the next level of kills, assists, and teammate, you know, unassisted kills goes into place where we're getting 10 SR for a kill, 10 SR for an assist, and 7 SR if TCAP gets a kill here and I don't do anything. Two other teams left, five other enemies. Always keep track of how many teams and how many enemies are left. And notice this whole entire time, we've just kept our high ground really well. Sometimes you're going to have to fight for high ground, but that, that's where you rotate early. And we'll talk about that a little bit. We're going to clear down below us here. Yep. Cleared behind us. So now what do we know? Now what do we know right here? We know that everybody is essentially in this area somewhere, right? Because we cleared. We're we're. We're good back here. We know we're good back here. So everybody is in front of us at this point. So now we just got to basically hold these spots and get the downs where yeah, when, down when they pop out. Guys. One straight ahead. 2v3 situation. We're at 93 SR. Last decision coming here in a second. We got a 2v3. We know exactly where they are. They have to push up to us. The question is, can they kind of just converge on us enough to be able to get the win themselves? Or can we take care of it? Down number one. Great shots with the HRM. Okay, here's your decision. We're in a really bad position here. Last enemy. We got, actually, let's assume there's still three alive, because I think I got one kill. I'm not 100% sure. We have one enemy left here. That's straight ahead of us, at least. This guy's down, and this guy's down. We have one enemy left. I'm down to half health, no plates, okay? So here's your decision. Here's your prompt. Do you push this way, or do you go challenge? So do you play the box here, just play it up real quick, and then push, or do you go challenge it, being very low health? We're going to go ahead. We're going to take this fight. You got to go. And by the way, watch the hip fire right here. Guys, that is an MTZ. That is a battle rifle, okay? So it's important to understand. I'm going to let this play here just so you see this end game real quick, this last three. That is a battle rifle. Hip fire in close quarters. It doesn't have to be an SMG. I don't care if it's an LMG, an AR, a battle rifle, whatever. Hip fire. Hip fire. Boom. There's the dub. And by the way, we finish at 123, but we also get another 20 for the win. That's not accounted for until after. So let's go ahead and jump into situation number two here. So this second end game here, this is just an absolutely insane clutch. Probably one of the best clutches that we have ever had, and we get rewarded with a ton of SR for it. Now, just to kind of catch you up with where we're at right here. First things first, respawn is disabled. So we're, we're kind of slowing down a little bit, but the more important thing to know is that me and Hog die just before this. TCAP was able to get out of the situation and keep us alive. So he has his full loadout and everything. Loadout guns, perks, everything. Me and Hog are flying back in with absolutely nothing. In terms of where we are, guys, this is the lighthouse area. We're obviously in this kind of swampy area right here, but we know that we have to get to this lighthouse building here in order to be in zone. In terms of SR, we're at 26 SR thus far. Notice that there are nine teams left. So we're one team off of that top eight placement. And then we have eight kills. So we're we're on a really good game thus far. I think TCAP and Hog have a bunch as well. So we're on a really good game as a squad here. Now, this starts off really, really unfortunate. And this puts us in a very tough spot. Not 100% sure what happened. Hog said, I got stuck. I'm not totally sure how he died. But now TCAP and I are in a really, really tough position. I'm going to let you listen to our comms and how we start to think through our decision making. And I'm going to pause and explain stuff at certain moments. Out to the left here, lighthouse. Also, guys, notice right here, like biggest thing to notice, just teams up this way and teams here. And as I always say, if you are subscribed, I say this in literally every single video, people, weapon pings on the minimap, nobody's just shooting their gun in the air. So you know that there are two teams fighting each other in both of these areas right here. So got to be really smart with that. Slide here. Yeah. Joe, we can wrap wide left and try to like sneak in over here. You want to do that? So here's what TCAP just said. He said, Joe, we can try to wrap wide left, okay, so wide this way, and sneak the buy. Now, the tough part of this is that we know that there are enemies here. 
right? So we know that there are tangos somewhere in this area. It's probably multiple. We're just not 100% sure where. The other dilemma here is that if we do rotate that way, we are going to have to rotate into zone this way here and get into this little corner area. We also have a team lighthouse. We know that there's people lighthouse. The other option is just to quietly sneak in here and see if we can just play like bottom lighthouse or something, maybe sneak into this building. Just play really quiet. Just try to get a little bit of placement here, knowing that we're in a really tough spot at this point with me not even having guns. And obviously it's just TCAP and I. So we're trying to figure out what exactly we want to do here. And no, I'm not making you guys pick a decision on this one because this is a really tough one. We can try to make a buy over there. Do you think it's worth it? Let's talk through this real quick. So I say, let's talk through this real quick. Okay. Now what I am looking at in this moment is this right here, 33 seconds left until circle starts to close. And then of course we have the whole entire time that circle closes, which I don't know exactly how long it is in four circle, but basically at this moment, I'm like, okay, let's take a second here. Let's really think through this. Let's put our brains together and figure out what the best option here in, in this moment is and make the right decision knowing that we don't have to rush it. Also notice this right here, that we are at top eight, which gives us the extra 20 uh, SR, putting us at 46 so far. And like I said, guys, I think we finished at like 143 in. here. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. I mean, I think, I think. Hog, where are you at? Right now. He's dead. This is important. Listen to this. He's dead, dead. I know. Hog, are you positive SR or negative SR? So the reason that I asked that is they just made a really important change when it comes to end game SR. But this game was before that change had happened. So in this moment right here, well, let me explain the change. The change that they made is that during end game, when you are dead, dead, when you are full dead, you still gain SR for squad mate kills. So with the change that has happened, if I get a kill right now, Grumpy Hog still gets the squad odd mate kill SR before the change, which is when this game happened, that was not the case. So anything that we do, Hog is not getting SR for it. Besides placement, he still gets placement SR, but he's not getting any squad mate kill SR. So I'm kind of like, hey, are you positive or negative? Like if you're on like, you know, plus 30, plus 40, probably not going to push too hard to get you back. If you're, you know, plus 10 or zero or maybe negative, then we'll play it a little bit more aggressive and see what we can do here. I'm like 10. S Still not going to make you make a decision on this one. Positive. He said he's plus 10. We'll see if we can work oh, it. Guys, we'll see if we can work it. Back behind us. What are we now, TCAP says, hey, what are we doing here? Like, we got to go. We can't We can't dilly-dally. And I say, okay, let's rock. Now, the reason I'm not making you make a decision is because this is not the smartest play. This is a very aggressive play by two players who are four and a half KD players. And like we have the ability to execute and put ourselves in those tough situations. And you're gonna see TCAP is the reason that we kind of pull this off here. So we're just gonna go ahead and work it here. TCAP's got the cash, got mortar strike, but we're just not gonna worry about that team just yet. No need to worry about that team. Look straight ahead of us here. Guys, do not miss these pings. A lot of pings happening over here. Multiple teams fighting straight ahead, and they are very close to the buy station. So we know that as we approach this, they are going to be right there. They are going to be right on top. And also notice the trigger discipline right here. No need to pull the trigger. The moment I pull the trigger with an unsilenced weapon, everybody starts to look towards me. Play patient here. On our level to the left side. TCAP's obviously going to smoke. Now, in this moment, guys, we're just looking for one kill, right? I'm going to mortar it. I'm going to claim more. Like, I'm doing anything that I can at this point to be able to potentially give ourselves an advantage. If we get stacked by a full team of three who knows what they're doing, we're not going to we're not gonna be able to do anything. So, we're going to use anything that we can. Mortars, claymores, whatever. And by the way, notice Hog is live pinging enemies. When you are flying back in, be very careful because you only have two and a half seconds of spawn protection. But... You should be live pinging for your teammates to give them that information. Now that is the play that changes everything. TCAP gets two downs right here. He's going to get, he gets one in the building that's straight across. So he gets one on this guy right here. And then he gets one to the left side. Now, quick little bonus tip here for you is when we go ahead, actually, I'll give it to you later. This is the first decision. I want you to pay attention here. He's going to go ahead. This guy selfs and he pushes and we're going to go ahead and tag him. Now in this moment, what do we do? Are we going to go ahead? And are we going to push this guy and keep the pressure on and really go to get this guy out and get the kill, knowing that this is probably the last guy? Or are we going to wait here and just play our high ground here, play it a little bit more patient, and just let him go? Yeah, we're going to we're gonna let him go here. 
right? No need to put ourselves in this situation. The other thing, I guess I should have done red here and just been like, no, don't push that. So the other thing that you need to notice here is, uh, is going to be camos. So this is just a little thing that applies to any point in time throughout the game. No floor loot gun has camos on it. So when I'm running and passing this guy and I see the camos here, I go, oh, like those are loadout guns, which I know are going to be good because we're in ranked. Then I go ahead and I'm like, nope, not going to chase that. There's no need to put the pressure on there. He got out. Okay, let's keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and grab the guns here. We still have the team that's top lighthouse. We call us Saw a quick little glimpse. By the way, notice we still have to get into Lighthouse. One, two knocks right there, but third one's obviously peeking, and we're in a really tough spot here. Not much that we can do. And look, that right there, when we look at this, guys, this right here is the advantage of high ground because there is nothing that we can do. TCAP's going to Semtex, but he just barely missed the Semtex. So there's not a whole lot we can do in this situation to get the Thirst. We're not going to push that. They're going to be revived by that point. So we're just going to have to go ahead and play this a little patient and just let them be. I'm pushing it down below here. I'm down below. We're yep, we're just going to play this little corner, corner here. here. Yeah, yeah. Now, bunch of people down below us here. Recon drones, guys. Not, not only with recon drones, recon drones, if you are subscribed, you know these are one of my favorite things to use, um, but more importantly, just remembering information. So as I throw this thing up, I am essentially trying to, by the way, notice we are top five at this point, so we got the top five placement. I'm just trying to get as much information as possible. Understand where all of the teams are, remember where all of the teams are, and then once we get this next circle in 11 seconds, that's going to allow us to make a pretty good decision about what we want to do. So we're going to go ahead. We notice one guy straight ahead there. I thought this team was, like, right behind this shack. Like, I thought they were literally on our level right behind the shack. And then I was like, oh, okay, no, 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 we're good. They're down low. So down low there, down low to the left. We've got multiple enemies above us that we got to be aware of. So we get the next circle. Let's talk about this. Next circle, toughest part of this here is the fact that they can stay up top, right? Now, we know that there's, like, full team of three down here, right? There's this guy here. There's one enemy over here. There's obviously three guys up here. Is that everybody? Three, six. Yeah, that's literally everybody, I think. Seven, that's everybody. That's crazy. Th yeah, there's three of us, which means there's eight enemies left. Three of them are here. Three of them are here. One of them is here, and one of them's here. So I know where everybody is at this point. But the biggest thing to note is that this tower, this lighthouse team can stay in lighthouse, right? So we can absolutely play down low here and just kind of wait another circle and hope that it pulls and kind of finishes like somewhere in this area where they have to jump. But we got to keep in mind these teams down below because they all have to rotate in. They're going to fight each other, but they have to rotate in. Down below, Next decision in 30 seconds yeah. here. Maybe less than that. I have smokes, yep, a bunch of people down below. So I can make, uh... TCAP said, I have smokes and I have durable. Both very I valuable things for end games. Just... Okay, so here's your next decision. We have the circle here. Now, we have two options. We can wait for tower team, okay? Or we can put the pressure on, okay? So that's gonna be your two options. Do we wait for this circle to start to collapse on itself? Or do we put the pressure on them a little bit? We're gonna put the pressure on. This is an aggressive play here, but there's one important, important, important thing to note, and I want you to remember this at any point in time. If a buy station is green, it means it's active and usable, okay? So TCAP is gonna use his durable gas mask, both of his smokes, actually he doesn't need smokes, he's just gonna use his durable to push over here, he's gonna buy a PA, and then we're gonna time this thing perfectly. And this is the play that wins us this game, 100%. Wait, is that buy station still in? My call. I did. I I dropped, dropped my call. I'll take some credit for that. So now what's the play here? As soon as TCAP precisions it, we're going. As soon as TCAP precisions it, we're going. There's the PA. And look, never know what can happen with PAs. And by the way, remember what I said about kill streaks. Remember what I said about kill streaks, right? We use them to force people to move, and we use them to thirst kills. In this situation, we got a little two for one special because we are forcing them inside, which allows Hog and I to push up. But you know, little two for one special. There's two downs right there. There's the squad wipe. I mean, guys, it's that simple. That is the danger of PAs. I never recommend 
Just to note, by the way, if we were PAing this building just to PA it with no intention of pushing it, it makes zero sense to do. The only way this makes sense is if we are going to PA it and Hog and I are going to push and just put the pressure on them. Now, thankfully, we get the two downs inside and then this is a pretty easy squad wipe. But even if we get one down or something, or maybe they drop down the ladder and then we can take the high ground from them, you never know what can happen. But this is why we put the pressure on right here. By the way, the other thing that I will add is don't over challenge this so let's say we're in a situation where tcap does not get a single down with that precision airstrike if we go to push in here and we don't feel comfortable fighting this like we can get off to a good start maybe get that initial not clean or something we're just gonna jump down hey we gave it a shot now we've got to wait for this circle to close on itself and then go from there but we end up getting a little bit of a break here by the way notice at this moment we are in a great spot here we are 3v1 situation we just got top th uh top three placement sr we're at 118 and this is the last decision that i want you guys to think about this is a little bit more of an advanced play here but i want you to understand that when it comes to being a good teammate this is important if you are in a 3v1 situation I want you to think about your teammates SR understand ladder. that taps are no longer a thing. Okay. So I'm not going to explain what taps are, but towards the end here, I just get, no, I just gave you the answer to, to the decision. Okay. So here's your option. Do you kill this guy or do you let your teammates kill him? I'm going to let my teammates kill him. So basically what's going to happen here, and this is just a little way to get an additional SR. Keep in mind, kills and assists are both worth 10 SR. So in this moment right here, I'm going to break him. Now, there's my tags, right? So now whoever kills him, I get the assist. Uh, Hog has already tagged him, so he got his tags. Now, Dumb when TCAP gets sorry. the kill... What you see right here is notice that I get 10 SR for the assist. TCAP got 10 SR for the, the kill. Hall got 10 SR for the assist. We get we just get more SR. So little thing that you can do if you're in that kind of 3v1 situation, maybe even in a, in a 3v, 3v2 is a little aggressive. I would say 3v1 situation. Make sure you guys are kind of sharing those assists. Obviously, if it's going really bad, don't do it. But overall, guys, um, make sure you're sharing your assists and kills, especially on that last teammate. So guys, I'm going to cut it right here just because this video went a lot longer than I thought it was. I had a lot of fun with this. Let me know if you want me to do more of these. Maybe we do some decision making. Maybe we do some positioning versus movement on Fortune's Keep. Let me know what you want down in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed today's video. As I always say, let's get better today, and I will see you tomorrow.